Today, our far-right, illegitimate Supreme Court handed down another victory for Christian nationalists, and now we are one step closer to their long-term goal of prayer in schools. And what's really abundantly clear with this case is they're not even trying to maintain this facade that they are objectively interpreting the Constitution. They're just brazenly imposing their minoritarian, theocratic views on everyone. So as Politico explains, the Supreme Court on Monday ruled in favor of a Washington State football coach who was suspended over his on-field prayers following games. The justice's decision largely breaking 6-3 along the court's usual ideological lines found that the school system infringed on the coach's religious freedom and free speech rights by seeking to block him from engaging in public prayers on the field while flanked by student athletes after games. The court's ruling in line with a series of recent decisions in favor of religious litigants is not a major overhaul of church state legal doctrine, but it is likely to make government employers more cautious about disciplining employees who engage in religious activity in the workplace, even if others complain about it. Justice Neil Gorsuch wrote the majority opinion, the bulk of which garnered the support of all the court's Republican appointees. Quote, both the free exercise and free speech clause of the First Amendment protect expressions like Mr. Kennedy's, nor does a proper understanding of the amendment's establishment clause require the government to single out private religious speech for special disfavor, Gorsuch wrote. The Constitution and the best of our traditions counsel mutual respect and tolerance, not censorship and suppression for religious and non-religious views alike. Now, Gorsuch's argument here is incredibly disingenuous. He's saying that the school not only singled him out, but the school violated his freedom to practice a religion uh, because he was practicing this religion privately. Now, this is an absurd statement to make because that's not what this coach was doing. But listen, as an anti-theist, I don't care if you're going to privately practice your religion. You can't make a show of it, right? But if you're just going to say a little prayer in your head... I don't care. I couldn't care less about that, right? What matters is you don't push your religion on others in your capacity as a state employee. Because if you work for a public school as either a teacher or a coach, well, you work for the state. You are a state representative. And states cannot establish or endorse a religion. If you're going to show some religion, then you have to show all the other religions. You are forced by the Constitution to remain neutral. So Gorsuch is arguing here that, look, he was privately practicing his religion, and you cannot stop him from doing that, except what he was doing was not privately practicing his religion. He was brazenly making a show of it to the point where students felt pressure to join in with him on this prayer. Take a look at this really quick clip from Good Morning America. I just want to be able to practice my faith after a football game. Joe Kennedy was an assistant coach at Bremerton High School near Seattle, and in 2008, he started praying by himself at midfield after games. Nobody should have to be fired or worried about their job if they show any signs of faith. Soon, players were joining him, and the school district had a problem. For the school district, Joe Kennedy was crossing a constitutional line. As a coach and a public employee, his act of faith could be seen as an endorsement by the district of a religion. And so officials told him he could no longer pray with his players if he wanted to keep his job. Some parents said their sons felt pressured to pray with Kennedy, but others supported him. It came to the point where they said, if you were being able to be seen anywhere on the football field, in prayer, then we're going to have to suspend you and ultimately it ended my career. So you have the coach saying, all I want is to pray in public on the football field where everyone can see me. And Gorsuch is saying, no, he's just privately practicing his religion. You can't stop him from doing that. That's infringing on his rights. He's admitting he's not doing it privately. He's doing it publicly in his capacity as a representative of the state. And other students who have a right to a secular public education are saying, it's making me feel like I have to join in. And the court's saying, he has to be allowed to do this. He has to be allowed to do that? Are you kidding me? If that's not an endorsement of a religion, then what is? Now, they're not saying currently that prayer in classrooms is okay because they are essentially ruling this way on a technicality. They're saying, well, he's not in the classroom. If he was in the classroom, then that would be a different story. But he's still on school property and he is brazenly endorsing a religion, praying where everyone can see him. That's promoting a religion. Now, he's not trying to be neutral. He's not saying, well, here's a Christian prayer on Tuesday and on Wednesday, we'll do a Buddhist prayer or whatever. He's simply trying to push his religion on everyone while he is serving as a state representative. That is brazenly 
against the First Amendment. But the court's saying, mm, doesn't matter. And as Brian Tyler Cohen put it, the Supreme Court just ruled that public school officials can lead students in prayer at school events. This means in Florida, teachers have a constitutional right to lead their classrooms in prayer, but could be fired for acknowledging the existence of gay people. Exactly. Now imagine if that were a Muslim leading school prayer. Imagine if that were a member of the satanic uh, temple doing a ritual, practicing his religion publicly. Do you think that the Supreme Court would have ruled in that same way? Of course not. Of course not. But these are a bunch of rogue theocrats who are unconstitutionally imposing their will on everyone in this country. They don't care about the Constitution. They're not even pretending to try to interpret the Constitution in an objective manner. They're just doing what they want, and they're saying if you don't like it, there's nothing you can do about it. We're not done yet. And what they're saying now is, oh, well, you know, you can't pray in the classrooms. But then two years down the line, three years down the line, they'll use this case as precedent and say, well, if we can't stop an employee from practicing their religion, you know, at a school event, then, of course, it logically follows that we shouldn't be allowed to stop employees from practicing their religion in the classroom. That's religious persecution. So, like, this paves the way towards prayer in schools. They just, they don't care. They don't care at all. They don't care how unpopular they become, how illegitimate they become. They are rogue. They are extremists. And this is only the beginning. Now, I want to get to the dissent here. Justice Sotomayor, in a dissent joined by Justices Elena Kagan and Stephen Breyer, included several photos of the Kennedys' on-field prayers and called the court's decision misguided. Quote, it elevates the religious rights of a school official who voluntarily accepted public employment and the limits that public employment entails over those of his students who are required to attend school and who this court has long recognized are particularly vulnerable and deserving of protection, Sotomayor wrote. And that's a really important point because these students are required to go to school. But that coach, his employment there is a choice. So while he has a captive audience, he now has the capability of endorsing his religion. And now that he got away with this, do you think that the school is going to stop him from reading Bible verses with a microphone? I mean, this is just the beginning. So this court couldn't be any more brazen. And because they're so shameless in how extreme they are, well, this has led the American people to support drastic reforms. So a Politico and Morning Consult poll finds that 62% of Americans support term limits for justices, 45% support expanding the number of justices on the court. That's now a plurality. 60% support placing an age cap on justices, 69% support binding justices to a code of ethics, 53% support balancing the court with equal numbers of Democrats, Republicans, and independents. And this is because the court is no longer viewed by the public as an apolitical body. It is a nakedly partisan institution. So people are saying, well, look, if it's just going to be a partisan institution, then we might as well try to balance the numbers on the court to make it, I guess, a little bit more fair. This is how illegitimate the court is. So these are indications that the American people are fed up. They want the Democratic Party, who's now in power to take drastic action to rein in this rogue, far-right, illegitimate court. But what are Democrats doing? Well, Biden said, mm, I don't support expanding the court. And Democrats are sending you emails saying, for $15, we can expand our majority and codify Roe. Okay, well, is codification truly the most reasonable way to go about this? I mean, sure, Roe versus Wade should be codified, but there's nothing stopping this extremist Supreme Court from striking down that law that you pass, assuming you're able to pass it. And with how much rights they're taking away, it is unreasonable to assume that Congress will be able to keep up and codify every single civil right and civil liberty that we lose. So the only thing that we can do is fight, reign in the power of the court, expand the number, but Democrats are saying we don't want to do that. So essentially, we're stuck in this scenario where for decades, we get to watch this court fundamentally transform our country. I mean, in five years, this country is going to look completely different. They are taking us down a path of theocracy. And even if the Constitution protects against that, this court is saying to hell with the Constitution. We have an agenda and we are imposing our minoritarian views on everyone, regardless of how unpopular those views are. Again, I just want to remind everyone, this is year one of a far-right extremist Supreme Court. Imagine what this country is going to look like. Imagine the destruction that they will cause in five, 10 years. It's truly a horrifying thought. And if we don't get leaders who actually are going to stand up and fight, then they are going to 
destroy this country and ruin the constitution.